another non-parametric test is the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Uh, data are sorted when they are arranged according to some criterion, such as smallest to largest or, or best to worst. A rank is a number assigned to an individual sample item according to its order in the sorted list. The first item is assigned a rank of 1, the second item is assigned a rank of 2, and so on. So, now suppose there's a tie. Let's say two values um, have this, or two data items have the same value. Then what you want to do is you want to find the average of the ranks that would be assigned. So, for instance, if it were fourth and fifth, you'd average those two ranks, four and five, by adding them and dividing them by two to get 4.5, and you assign each of the data values that rank of 4.5. Now, the Wilcoxon signed rank test is a test that uses ranks for these applications. Application one tests the null hypothesis that the population of matched pairs or that a population of matched pairs has differences with a median equal to zero. So if you calculate all the differences, for an entire population of matched pairs, that median would equal to zero, the median of those differences. The second application is to test the null hypothesis that a single population has a claimed value for its median. So testing hypothesis about a median. OK, so let's take a look at an example where we're actually doing this first application, or actually. Uh, trying to test the null hypothesis that a population of matched pairs has a difference with a median equal has differences with a median equal to zero. So in this case, we have matched pairs which are actual high temperatures for one and forecast one day high temperatures as the other. So high temperatures forecast uh, one day. Uh, in advance. So, we're going to use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that the population of differences has a median of zero. So that's application one here. All right, so let's take a look at our paired data. Now the paired data, we have the actual high temperatures in the top row and the forecast high temperatures in the bottom row. What we're going to do is we're going to follow step one here. For each pair of data, find the difference, D, by subtracting the second value from the first value. Discard any pairs that have a difference of zero. So this pair has a difference of two. So let's write all the differences here. This first pair, 80 and 78, have a difference of two. The second pair, 77 and 75, also have a difference of 2. This third pair, 81 and 81, have a difference of 0. 85 and 85 also has a difference of 0. 73 and 76, negative 3 for the difference. 73 and 75, negative 2 for the distance, or for the difference. 80 and 79, 1 is the difference. 72 and 74, negative 2 as the difference. So here are our differences. That is step one. Now, step two is ignoring sign, sort the differences from lowest to highest, and replace the differences with the corresponding ranks. So now I'm going to make my ranks in this row here. So we'll have the ranks here. All right. So, this first pair, uh, let's see, that looks like the highest rank. Of, look, these look like the highest numbers. We want to rank them from lowest to highest. So the smallest number here is negative 3. That receives a rank of 1. Now the next smallest number is going to be negative 2, and there are two values that are tied for negative 2. The ranks would be 2 and 3. So we're going to find the average of those ranks, 2 and 3, which is 2.5. We're going to assign both of these values that rank, 2.5. All right, the next smallest number is 1. 
because remember we're ignoring the pairs that have a difference of uh, zero. We're ignoring those pairs, so we're not counting these. So the next number in order would be one. Well, we've taken care of two and three, and we've actually ranked that as 2.5. So now we're looking at the fourth ranked number as the number one. And then these tools would be five and six. So we're going to average five and six, which is uh, 5.5. And we're going to give these two tools that rank of 5.5. So here we have our ranks. And we're going to ignore the differences now in favor of the ranks. Step three is to attach to each rank the sign of the difference from which it came. All right, so we're going to insert the signs that were ignored in step uh, two. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's see. Well, these first two ranks came from differences that were positive. So 5.5 and 5.5 stay. This rank, negative or one, comes from a difference that's negative. So I'm going to make this negative. This is also negative, so its rank is negative. This is positive, so the 4 will stay positive because 1 is a positive difference. And here, this rank is also for a negative uh, difference. So all the differences that came from negative, all the ranks that came from negative differences, I assign them, I make them negative. That's step 3. So step 4 is to find the sum of the ranks that are positive and also find the absolute value of the sum of the negative ranks. So let's see here. The positive ranks are 5.5, 5.5, and 4. So the sum of those positive ranks is equal to, let's see, that's 5.5 plus 5.5, which is 11, plus 4, which equals 15. The sum of the negative ranks is going to equal, let's see, we have negative 1, uh, negative 5 point, negative 2.5, and negative 2.5. So that's negative 1 plus negative 2.5 plus negative 2.5, which is negative 6. And then we find the absolute value of that. So the absolute value of this sum is the absolute value of negative 6, which is 6. So that is step 4. Step 5 is to let t be the smaller of the two sums found in step 4. Uh, OK, so in this case, these are the two sums we found in step 4. And the smaller of the two is 6. So t is equal to 6 would be step 5. Now step 6 is to let n be the number of pairs of data for which the difference is not 0. And if you remember up here, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pairs of data for which the difference was not 0. So for step 6, 10 is also equal to 6. Oops, let's choose the pencil here. Yeah, so n is equal to 6, and so is t. So we have n and t. n is equal to 6, and t is equal to 6. And that is step 6. Step seven is to determine the test statistic and critical values based on the sample size. Now, if the sample size is less than or equal to 30, then we're going to use this test statistic, t. We're going to use this t here. And um, we're going to use t, and uh, we're going to find the critical values from this table, a8. So these are critical values of T for the Wilcox and Sign rank tests. This is in the appendix of your book. Okay, now for 
sample size is greater than 30. What we're going to do is we're going to use a Z score, and that's going to be Z equals T, T minus N times N plus 1 over 4. all divided by the square root of n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 24. So that's the square root of n times n plus 1 uh, times 2n plus 1 over 24 divided by 24. So um, if you have a large enough sample, uh, this really, I would use this uh, method for smaller samples anyway. So in this case, we're going to, because our sample size is six, uh, is, uh, sample size is six, we're going to use this T, which is six with table A8, to figure out whether we should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? So let's see here. What we have here is our N is equal to six n is equal to 6. So we're going to look over and we're doing a alpha significance level of, what was the significance level up here? Let's see. Significance level was uh, 0.05, I believe. Yes, 0.05 for the significance level. So we have a significance level of 0.05, and we here are doing a two-tail test, I believe, also. Yep, a two-tail test. Uh, we are testing the claim that the population of differences has a mean that um, has a median of zero, or alternatively, that it has a median that is not equal to zero. So we have a two-tail test, and we want 0.05 in two tails. So we go to the column that has two tails with 0.05 in two tails, 0.05 in two tails. Here's a 0.05. And when I look down to 6, I see that my critical value is 1. So I have a critical value of 1. And uh, let's see here. We reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic, T, is less than or equal to the critical value found in the table. Fail to reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic, T, is greater than the critical value found in the table. So our case is T6, T equals 6, is greater than the critical value found in the table, which was 1. So we have the case where we fail to reject the null hypothesis because t is greater than the critical value. So therefore, what we're saying here is we're failing to reject the null hypothesis. And if you remember, the hypothesis, the null hypothesis was that uh, the population of differences at a median of 0. So we cannot reject the hypothesis that the population of differences has a median of zero. So there actually is no difference, no median difference between the actual high temperature and the high temperature.